Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. Just got back from uh, seeing the final girls at the AFI Silver down in Silver Spring. Uh, comes out everywhere tomorrow. Uh, right off the top, definitely check it out. Uh, good movie, uh, solid bunch of fun, uh, great performances all around. Here's the plot. A young woman grieving from the loss of her mother, a famous scream queen from the 80s, finds herself pulled into the world of her mom's most famous movie. Reunited, the women must fight off the film's mani maniac killer. So, basically what this movie is, is this movie is what happens when you take the last action hero and Pleasantville throw them together with a hefty helping of Friday the 13th. And what comes out is pretty impressive. Um, yeah, it's kind of a ridiculous premise. It's kind of got a lot of um, things that don't make a lot of sense. Like, you know, how did they get into that movie to begin with? But you know what? That's not important. Because the story moves right along, the characters ask the same questions that the audience asks. They don't really get any good answers, but it doesn't make a difference. Because it's fun. It's a fun movie. It's, it sends up the old classic slasher film tropes as seen very well in Friday the 13th movies. Uh, and it plays with them a bit. It's a very self-aware film. I mean, these characters know they're in a movie. That's the whole plot. The characters know they're in a movie. It's not the same movie we're watching, but it works just as well. Absolute fantastic comedy in it. Some really uh, impressive uh, action bits in it. But what really caught me off guard, what surprised me most, was how much emotion the movie squeezed in there. Um, I, I wasn't expecting to get a bit choked up during a horror comedy, but hey, it happened. Uh, and that, that's a testament to the writing and the acting and the directing. Uh, and since this horror film that they get sucked into is set in the 80s, uh, I find it very amusing that out of everyone involved in the uh, core of the film, the screenwriters, the director, uh, and most of the stars, uh, there's maybe two people who actually would remember much from the 80s. Uh, so the 80s stuff and the 80s slasher film didn't ring quite 80s enough for me, who remembers how all of that actually was. Uh, but it's good enough. Uh, the, the stylistic choices are very interesting. They do some really neat stuff with their color saturation uh, to really give you the surreal feeling a lot of the time. And then they intercut that uh, with these more somber tones, the, these sharp uh, chiaroscuro feel, feelings in, the, uh, in some of the scenes in the woods when the slasher comes into play. Uh, when characters are having those emotional discussions, the color palette switches. And that's really neat. And the only reason I noticed that is because I've started looking at color palettes uh, since reading a few articles about how they get used. And that whole orange and blue uh, set of choices that get used all the time. Well, they do that in this, but then they throw in uh, some other stuff too, just to uh, shake things up, to keep it interesting. Uh, the special effects are really, really outlandish at places and somewhat jarring sometimes. Um, I'm not sure I agree with all their choices, with how they finished off their effects. Uh, there's a couple things in the 80s movie that really don't feel 80s because they're done too well. Uh, the title, some of the titles, some of the uh, other bits uh, of what should be 80s type special effects uh, don't come across that way. But they make up for that with some other really, really super cheesy stuff. The uh, movie is full of uh, fam familiar faces for anyone who watches bunches of TV like me uh, and bunches of uh, stuff online like me. Uh, 
of particular note uh, are uh, Thaisa Farmiga uh, from American Horror Story, uh, a couple seasons of that. Uh, she plays the lead, Max, and she is absolutely fantastic. Uh, she's the reason why you get a lot of great emotion in this movie. Uh, same thing with Malin Ackerman, uh, who uh, some of you may remember as Silk Spectre 2 in uh, the Watchmen movie. Uh, she's done a bunch of other stuff. Uh, she's fantastic uh, playing Max's mom and the character that her mom played in this horror movie they get sucked into. Uh, Alexander Ludwig uh, from Vikings it is really, uh, really solid as kind of an understated character. Uh, he's the good guy jock, uh, effectively, a and he plays it very well. He he's not the hero of the film. That that goes all to Max. Uh, so you have a strong female lead in this movie, uh, talking a lot about or demonstrating a lot of the uh, tropes and how silly they are from a modern perspective uh, and dealing with that and twisting them around a little bit. Uh, Nina Dobrev uh, from Vampire Diaries, uh, playing a, a mean girlish type character, uh, also from the present, also sucked into this movie. Uh, Adam Devine uh, is playing his standard smarmy character, which is absolutely hilarious as it usually is really annoying you don't mind when this character eventually dies but that's adam divine he plays that sort of character perfectly and they use that character perfectly in this movie there is a lot in this movie that is spot on uh so i highly recommend it it comes out in uh, limited release uh friday today and uh, should also be available uh, on demand in a bunch of digital distributors. It's been making the uh, film festival circuit uh, for the past year or so. Um, it's got a copyright date of 2014 on it and a whole lot of festival awards uh, right up front. So it deserves every single one of them. Uh, this was the first night of the uh, Spooky Movie uh, Film Festival uh, here in Silver Spring uh, at the AFI. Uh, I've got a full pass for that, so I'll be seeing a couple of these. I won't be able to make it to all the ones I want. I couldn't stick around there for the second feature tonight, uh, Night of the Living Deb, which looked like it could be funny, uh, or at least interesting. Uh, unfortunately, this comes at me when my schedule is really kind of packed. Otherwise, I could so spend... An entire week uh, sitting in that theater uh, every night uh, watching the, these movies because I don't get out to see anywhere near enough horror films these days. Uh, and it's been, been a long time since I've seen one that puts as much stuff together really, really well like The Final Girls does. So check that out. That's it for tonight. Uh, if you've seen The Final Girls and want to talk about it, uh, post in the comments. Uh, if you like what I have to say, uh, hit the thumbs up button. Give me a, uh, give me a like here. Uh, subscribe if you want more of these. I'm doing them pretty much every day now. Uh, that's going to go on for a while yet. Then we'll see what we uh, switch up. And if you think anyone else would be interested in any of this, share the, share the video, share it around. Uh, let people know that uh, they should go see uh, Final Girls because if you want more good original uh, commentary on, on the film industry, if you want creative people to get paid to make movies, this is the kind of movie that you have to support and sing the praises of because this is an original take on stuff. It's very creative, uh, and it's got a unique voice uh, that, that mixes together a bunch of disparate things. Horror, comedy, emotion. It does them all, and it does them all well. If you want more movies like that, this is the sort of thing to, uh, to go and see. That's it for today. Uh, I'm Kier, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow.